Today's espionage is not conducted by James Bond-like agent wearing fancy tuxedos anymore. They are conducted behind a computer screen by an attacker controlling its code remotely. All the code is written in a way that it's spreading and damages its target, like Stuxnet. For long it was rumored that Stuxnet was written by governments. Now this is confirmed. And it is also confirmed that Stuxnet went out of control and not only was contained within a uranium enrichment facility in Iran, but was spreading widely. We saw the wide spreading thanks to our smart protection network, and it was scary to see how many Symatec WinCC scatter control systems have been affected, especially in India. These supervisory control and data acquisition systems are there to control critical infrastructures. How big was the collateral damage of Stuxnet due to this? Difficult to figure this out, and I wonder what the legal implications are if a government by accident shuts down an infrastructure of another government. Okay, I'm not a lawyer, but a security expert, and I wonder why Stuxnet had such an aggressive distribution mechanism. Why was it written in a way that it replicated beyond its target? If it would just have been contained, a contained targeted attack, we would not be aware of Stuxnet. And the digital underground would not have been able to create an attack toolkit, Toku, which is available for purchase in the digital underground. What about Flame? Is this another APT who went out of control? The lesson for me is that it's difficult to control malware, that there will be unwanted side effects, and that the actors behind should ask themselves if they really want to start a cyber attack, a cyber war. Because if this really gets out of control, it could attack their own infrastructure. Reminds me of the Terminator movies or of the movie war games. Writing malware is bad, unethical and a crime in most legislations. Let's always remember this.